We start our ceremonies for this Memorial Day weekend here at the uh, Veterans Memorial, um, which is a very nice setting for us to begin with. It's where the parade has always traditionally stepped off from. And so we begin by um, placing a wreath and lowering the flag to half mask and having a, and having a gun salute and uh, taps. So at this time I call upon our veterans to uh, place the wreath. lower the flag to half mast
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Memorial Day parade and ceremonies here at Riverside Cemetery uh, in the town of Sunderland. We uh, have been blessed with wonderful weather this evening for our ceremony. At this time, I'd like to call our veterans from Sunderland to come forward. And we're gonna place the uh, wreath. And now we're gonna lower the flag to half mast. And at this time, I'd like to call Tom Feidenkevich, the chair of the Board of Selectmen, to come forward and read the proclamation from the governor for Memorial Day 2018. A proclamation. Whereas, while the nation was still recovering from the horrors of the Civil War, people in cities and towns across the country gathered to honor those Union and Confederate soldiers who had given their lives celebrating the first Decoration Day. And whereas, after World War I, the nation came together again to honor those that had fallen in the service of their country, renamed Memorial Day. The last Monday in May is when people remember and honor the memory of all the men and women who fought and died and all American wars and conflicts. And whereas throughout our country's history, thousands of Massachusetts citizens have fought in wars and conflicts to defend our safety and way of life. And whereas their legacy of patriotism and dedication to country is an inspiration to all Americans. And whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who gave their lives so that their sacrifices served as a reminder of the cost of our freedom. Now, therefore, I, Charles B. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim May 28, 2018, to be Memorial Day. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> It was in the first week of May in 1868 that General John Logan, the commander of the Grand Army of the Republic, declared that the 30th of May is des designated for the purpose of the strewing of flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in the defense of their country during the late rebellion and whose bodies lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. It was called Decoration Day. And as Tom read the history from the proclamation, 
It changed to Memorial Day after World War I. That first Decoration Day, General James Garfield, later President of the United States, made a speech at Arlington National Cemetery, and 5,000 participants decorated the graves of both Union and Confederate soldiers in the cemetery at Arlington, Virginia. A descendant relative of General Logan is a pastor of our church here in Sunderland, and the Reverend Barbara Seaman will now come and give the invocation. Thank you all for being here. It is good that we are here. Let us pray. Loving God of all creation, look down upon us here in Sunderland, Massachusetts as we honor those who through the centuries have given their lives in service to our country. Bestow upon us your grace and mercy that we may rightly remember their ultimate sacrifice. Remind us, O oh God, to listen to your voice of hope and grace, that all people may one day live together in harmony and peace. Enfold us in your love as only you can, and lift us beyond the grave, that we may know your peace that passes all understanding. Amen. Amen. <laughs> As has been our custom for the past 10 years, we have recognized the oldest veteran in the town of Sunderland. And today we are very pleased once again to have with us James Jim Clark Williams. While attending the University of New Hampshire, Jim enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in late 1942. He finished at UNH in the spring of 1943 and he went on to more studies at Cornell until he was called to Paris Island and later to officer training at Quatico, Virginia. Jim went to Guam and served in the Pacific Theater in World War II after the bombs were dropped in Japan. He was then sent to both the island of Saipan and Marcus Island in the Pacific to secure both of those islands. He went back to Guam and eventually completing his assignments and military service, he returned to the family farm here in Sunderland. Shortly after that, he married Agnes Fitch, and they were married for more than 60 years, raising a family and children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and maybe some great-greats I'm not aware of um, here in Sunderland. Perhaps one of the things I remember most about Jim Williams, however, is with one of my first town meetings I attended when I moved to town here in 1980. And um, I always found that Jim participated in many different uh, parts of the town, serving in many capacities over the years. But at town meeting, he was always a, a thoughtful and well-spoken uh, member of town meeting. And um, wasn't shy about sharing his thoughts, but also respectfully listen to the thoughts of others. He was truly a, a soldier and a farmer and a family man and a citizen and any town would be very pleased and proud to have Jim Williams a part of it for so many years. Thank you and thank you for your service. At this time we will have a moment of silence for two purposes. The first purpose is to remember the veteran from the town of Sunderland who passed away during the last year. And the second will be to remember those who are currently serving in various parts around the world and their families who also, when they serve, serve as well. 
During this past year, we only had one veteran who passed away, and that was Alfred R. LaMountain, Jr., who served in the U.S. Air Force during the Korean War. Let us have a moment of silence for him, as well as for those who serve today. Thank you. We have uh, with us a couple of uh, folks that have been with us uh, many times over the years um, on this Friday night uh, of the Memorial Day weekend. Um, Stan Rosenberg and Steve Kulik. And Steve, I believe, is going to come and just say a quick hello and a couple of words. Um, and uh, then we will continue with the rest of our ceremony. We're very happy to have both of you here with us today. Thank you very much, Jim. Good evening, everyone. And uh, it's wonderful to be with you, um, participating in this event, uh, this Memorial Day celebration or observance in Sunderland for the past 25 years as your state representative has been a real privilege and an honor to join you because, as I've told so many people, um, Sunderland does this right. Uh, you show enormous respect for veterans who have served in any era, but you know how to show the respect uh, and, and honor the history uh, for those who have made the ultimate sacrifice and have given their lives in defense of our freedoms and our liberty and for this community and for this country. So uh, my deepest respect for the citizens of Sunderland for the way they observe Memorial Day. I want to acknowledge my good friend Stan Rosenberg. We've been here uh, together 25 years in my case and a few more years than that in Stan's case. And it's been a privilege for both of us to serve you. And um, I want to thank you for inviting us to be a part of this observance every year. And uh, perhaps I'll be back as in my civilian role to join you and see so many familiar faces that I've gotten to know in Sunderland over the years. Uh, so I hope you all have a uh, pleasant and thoughtful and safe Memorial Day weekend. Uh, thank you for doing what you do. And I can't leave without also saying, although I'll see you in a few weeks at the next parade, happy birthday to Sunderland. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we're going to have a great party in a few weeks, but happy Memorial Day, everyone. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. And we thank you both for your service. At this time, we'll have a medley from the Frontier Band. Um, as well as the national anthem.
as has been our custom for the last few years, we invite the top male and the top female student from Frontier Regional High School in the graduating class of 2018 to come forward and to be recognized. We don't get the chance to recognize our students um, that often here in town in a public way and also to have them participate by doing a reading. The top male student is Brandon Truswell. He's been a maximum honors student during his four years of high school at Frontier. He's been a member of the varsity football and the varsity track and field teams and has been elected captain of the track and field team for the past two years. His plans for next year are incomplete at this time, but he is applying to different colleges and is interested in pursuing college studies in biology and environmental sciences and or in business administration. And maybe he can combine those somehow at some point in the future. And so I would like to have Brandon come forward at this time and read the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who have gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add and detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they so fought here have thus far so notably advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to a greater task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that that government for the, of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from this earth. Thank you very much, Pat. The top female student from the graduating class of Frontier Regional High School in 2018 is Ella Dean. Ella is a member of the National Honor Society, has been a maximum honor student during her four years of high school at Frontier. She served as class secretary for the past three years. She's been very involved in the musical program, wind ensemble, uh, jazz band, marching band, and orchestra for six years. She's been a member of the Western District Festival Ensembles um, and has been one of the Memorial Day buglers here uh, and for Memorial Day um, in the other towns as well, I believe for the last four years. Um, she was a cast member of the productions of Guys and Dolls and The Wizard of Oz and a co-director of last year's sketch comedy show. She's a member of both the varsity volleyball and basketball teams for which she has received many accolades, um, but perhaps uh, sweetest of all, being captain of the 2017 state champion volleyball team. She also received Western Mass and all star selections and um, all state selections as well as selections from the Greenfield Recorder, including the Greenfield Recorder Player of the Year in 2017 for basketball. Her community service includes Habitat for Community, uh, Read Across America, and Reading with the Red Hawks programs in our elementary schools, in the district schools. She's promoted instrumental music through presentations to district elementary schools 
encouraging elementary school students to pursue music in high school. Her future plans include attendance at WPI and majoring in engineering. Ella. On the 2nd of May, 1915, in the second week of fighting during the Second Battle of... That, Lieutenant Alexis Helmer was killed by a German artillery shell. He was a friend of the Canadian military doctor, Major John McRae. It is believed that McRae began the draft for his famous poem in Flanders Fields that evening as he reflected on the death of his friend and the cost of war. In Flanders Fields is one of the most quoted poems concerning the ultimate cost of the freedoms that we all enjoy in America. It is fitting that we read it during these ceremonies on this Memorial Day weekend. The tradition of wearing red poppies on Memorial Day takes its origin from this well-known and beloved poem. In Flanders fields the poppies blow, between the crosses row on row, that mark our place and in the sky, the lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead, short days ago, we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though poppies grow in Flanders fields. At this time we have the roll call of those who died during uh, the service uh, to their country uh, in military service and um, as we read each name we will also um, place a carnation at the foot of the wreath in their honor and memory. In the French and Indian War, Jonathan Bridgman. Samuel Gunn. Nathaniel Montague. <laughs> Eli Scott. In the Revolutionary War, 60 served and there were no deceased. In the War of 1812, 6 served and there were no deceased. In the Civil War, 85 served and there were 8 deceased. Charles Blodgett. William Farrell. Elliot Puffer.
Fred B. Crocker. James Hill. <laughs> Martin Martin S. Hubbard. John Jones. <laughs> Otis D. Munsell. In World War I, 42 served and there were two deceased. Edwin B. Cooley. <laughs> Antonio Tomasco. In World War II, 161 served. There were three deceased, Lawrence Hubbard Bixby. Michael Corpita. Leon Wozniakiewicz. In the Korean War, 37 men and one woman served. There were no deceased. In the Vietnam War, there was one deceased, Richard C. Graves. Our numbers for those who have served in the Persian Gulf Desert Storm Wars and the Iraq-Afghanistan Wars are not totally up to date. As far as we know, no one was deceased in either of those conflicts to this point in time. Oh. 